Here we'll get into the system setup, setting up your network settings, DICOM, and customization of the system itself. To get there, we're going to press this utility key, and we'll see. One thing, when you press that utility key, you'll think that a screen should appear. It won't. Anytime you hit a button on this machine and nothing happens, chances are something's come up over here, and it's waiting for your input. So at first, it is a little confusing. Um, but for those of you doing 4D and want an external monitor, this is where you'll activate your external monitor. When you plug one in, normally it's not going to show anything up. You need to hit A to activate that VGA port. Here we can also go into system measurements, biopsy, and custom setups. For this, uh, we will go through the system and the measurement setups. So I'm going to either select that or just press S to get into the system setup. And here we have, we can adjust our date and time, the format. I would recommend getting rid of this screen saver in this auto scan stop, especially if you're doing 4D imaging. Often you'll be doing 4D imaging for a while and not adjust anything on the keyboard and the machine will just stop right in the middle of the scan. So I do recommend turning that off if you're doing 4D. User settings, we did go over this a little bit before, but this is where you're going to save your user presets in 3D, 4D. And we'll get into a little bit of that in the 4D section as well. But this is where you're going to go to your user programs once you've made your adjustments and you can overwrite any of these and then save for any of the probes and where you want to save it. So in order to save that, you're going to make your adjustments on the image. Say you like harmonics at a higher level or you've changed your dynamic range or your zoom or your focal zones. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and click the utility key system setup. Go to this user settings go to user programs and you can either overwrite it by clicking on one and then save and exit or you can click on it and then type in something new and then you would click save I'm gonna click return so I don't actually want to save that but some other notes about that is you would select this under your obstetric abdomen gynecology or pediatric which are specific to that probe and this probe right here is the one that's selected so each time you go on, you can have these custom user presets on there. Let me return to go back to that previous page. The same thing stands for your 3D, 4D programs. Text auto. Somebody's put in, I'm a boy and I'm a girl here. So you can do all that. So when you hit your annotations, this is where you would customize your own and they would show up on that list on the left-hand side. Oh, also, these are specified by the application, so you can change these for each application and they'll all have their own custom libraries here. So you go ahead and click return here. Trackball speed, you just check the speed of the trackball and how it scrolls across. There's some other options here about how the patient ID is calculated. Start the exam, do you want to save that patient screen to SonoView? It'll take a screen capture of that patient ID. Auto start acquisition, so when you get started, it'll automatically start going. Uh, menu brightness, dialog, these are just different ways that it's going to display. The zoom key is it say you want to go to media to HD zoom or the pan and zoom. Clear text on unfreeze, this is after you take a measurement or do an annotation. When you hit unfreeze, do you want those annotations to stay on screen or not? Speckle reduction for rendering, and again, these are all the different things that you can set up to customize what type of screens show up and what don't. P1, P2, P3, this is to assign these buttons here so you can have it save, print, or do whatever. For this machine, I have got, I've unchecked print with P1. So P1, I've just got it to save to my internal archive. So it saves to the hard drive, and then I can export it from there to my USB instead of going straight to the USB. You can also have it export to a USB automatically if you want. But if you don't have a USB plugged in, it will give you an error, which could be kind of annoying. So if you don't have a USB plugged in all the time, I don't recommend doing that. You can also do that with P2. So I can print, I can save, and export. I can do all three with P2. Right now, I would say, we'll just do P2 for print. So if I've got this color printer hooked up, I would select my color printer from this list here. So this UPD897 is a black and white printer. And so each time I hit P2, it will print to that printer. And then P3. I can just say, you know what, if I do have a USB stick there, I'm just going to hit P3 each time. 
and then that will automatically go to the USB stick. Most often I just recommend using P1 for for saving to the hard drive, P2 for printing to color, and P3 maybe to black and white. But whatever you want to do, it really doesn't make a difference. It's just whatever works best for you. Options, this is just the system options and what is available on your system. Service, this takes you to a service page. Uh, you need a password to get through there, so you'd want to talk to a technician to see if it's something that you even want to mess with. You can back up your user settings or a full backup. So the user settings is a good one because you can make your custom presets for 2D, 3D, 4D imaging, um, your calculations and all those things. You can save those to a USB stick and load them later. And if you have multiple systems, you can take that USB stick with the settings saved from this machine and move them on to other machines without having to reprogram all those. It's especially good with custom measurements or annotations. Network. Here's where we're going to set up our DICOM configuration. So here we can add our DICOM server. So what we would do is go down here and click Add. And I'm going to go ahead and connect an Ethernet cable to the back of the system. It does not have Wi-Fi, so you need the Ethernet cable to connect. So I've connected the Ethernet cable to the back of the machine because this one doesn't have Wi-Fi. And before we begin with the DICOM and network setup, it is very important you contact two people. The first is the person who handles your IT in the office. And you need to find out if they have DHCP or you need a static IP address. And I'll get to that information in just a second. Next, you need to contact the person handling the PAX or DICOM server. They will give you some information such as an AE title, an IP address, a port number, or other such information they might require for you to communicate with their PAX system. So before you proceed, you must get that information because only they can provide it. No tech support outside of your own company and PAX provider can provide that information. That being said, let's go ahead. To go ahead and configure the DICOM. We'll go ahead and click here, the DICOM Sono View configuration. This is the information for this particular system. So I could name it Volusan I. And that's how it will show up on the DICOM server, station name, and you can leave all of this as default unless they give you some other sort of information. So I'm going to head and now I want to connect to the DICOM server. So I go down here to add and I'm going to choose DICOM store. If you have work list, report, structured reporting or anything of that sort, printing, you could select that from this. Right now I'm only interested in the DICOM store. And so I'm going to add the information I have from my server and that's specific to my server. They may give you something else for the alias. The alias is just something you can call it so you can remember it in case your AE title is something confusing. I would here select for 2D compression. Uh, that's going to be saved in JPEG. And you can leave it at the JPEG quality at 95% or 100% if you choose. And this is going to make the transmission a lot faster because uh, the fully uncompressed files are very large and they can fill up your hard drive quickly and it will take longer to transfer over the network. So you can go ahead and you know the DICOM image type just leave it the same unless you have information about a secondary capture or anything like this. Send 2D as multi-frame and you can send the 4D images as a multi-frame or the volume sound format. I would go ahead and choose multi-frame for that. And now here's the information that you'll get from the server. You'll get an IP address and mine for specific for my server is entered here and my port number. Now if I don't include that information, the IP address and port number, I won't be able to send anything at all. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and exit. And here it is, my IP address all of that kind of information. Now I can also test this connection and it says ping and verify OK. The ping just tells you if you have a network connection that can talk to or see the computer on the other end of the network such as your DICOM server or PAX server. All it's telling you is that it has an internet connection and can do that. Verify actually speaks to the DICOM server and finds out if it will accept images from this machine. 
If you get a failure in either one, typically if it's a ping, it means you're not connected to your local area network and you need to check with your IT professional to find out if it's on the network. Make sure you have your Ethernet cable attached, those kinds of things, and you get the IP address correct. If you don't get verify, chances are you have an incorrect AE title, IP address, or port number. Those are the first things that you're going to want to check to make sure they're absolutely correct. And you check them line by line very carefully because 95% of the issues with the DICOM verify failure is because of the port number, IP address, or alias. The second thing you would check is if there's a firewall in your office or on the office on the other side where they're not allowing specific communications from your machine. So you will need to talk to your IT person or your PAX administrator to find out what is keeping your ultrasound from communicating with the other side. So we can go ahead and click save and exit and there you have your DICOM configuration. Here's where you also check your DICOM queue status. If you've sent something and it doesn't seem to be going across, you can click on this and it will give you a status window where you can cancel, retry, or terminate. So you can hold the queue if multiple things are there and you need to disconnect from the network. Retry if it failed. You can delete if it's going on. Retry all of them or delete all of them. And here I'll just click close. So if you have a problem and you verified and all that and you just want to find out if something's gone across or not, that's where you're going to want to check. So here I'll go into the system information, and this is just information about your system. In case you have some sort of problem, this, they'll ask you for a software version, and they might ask you to take a picture of the screen in case there's an issue with your system. And now we'll go into the measurement setup. I'm going to press Utility again, and I'm going to go up to Measure or simply press the M key. And this looks very complicated at first, but there is a rhyme and reason to it. First, you're going to select the application that you want to customize. And here you have your various calculations or generic measurements. And here you can modify, add, remove, edit, and add all sorts of calculations. Typically the default is all you need, but if you want to choose different ways of calculating estimated fetal age, weight, those kinds of things, you can select that from here. Fetal weight, fetal, any estimations, and you can save that as, as your own user preset as well. So you can go through that in the various imaging. And then you'll select calc or generic to make your edits there. You can also choose an auto sequence here where you can click on this and choose the order in which your measurements will be taken. So if you take a head circumference and a biprial diameter, you can click and put them in the order that you want. And it will tell you exactly, it'll go right through that order for you so you don't have to keep clicking each time and select a new measurement. Application parameters, this asks you what you want to do when you hit the freeze button uh, in various modes and different customizations like heart rate cycles for PW or M mode, how many heart rate cycles you want to use to get a more accurate measurement, your manual trace method, uh, author's name on measure menu, this is like Hadlock or anything, Campbell, Hansman, things like that. For your auto trace or manual trace, what, is, what do you want it to calculate here? And then again, you have the same thing for all sorts of different calculations. You can set that up e uniquely for each one. Global parameters, this is another just way to set up the measurements all the way across. It's just a whole lot of different customizations if you like to see yours in a certain way. So just, you know, like on the OB graph, how do you want it to display, the percentage, standard deviation, etc. And so to get out of that, we'll just click Exit. And that concludes the training on the GE Volusan I from Providian Medical. Thank you for watching.